The peaceful suburban streets of Brisbane seem an unlikely setting for a plague of science fiction style venomous creatures. But one spider expert says the incredible is occurring here. So you'd find them here, so close to the city. Yep, they could well be. Even uh, though the textbooks say here. it can't happen, yeah, it seems different species of spiders are successfully crossbreeding to create dangerous new hybrids. But this is probably a very good spot here. Dr. Raven is a Brisbane arachnologist, one of Australia's leading spider experts. Oh, wow. What do you actually see under there? Oh, about five to eight females and about 56 egg sacs. My goodness, what is that? Well, that's the brown widow. It's our, our second redback or widow species in, the, in Australia. But they're not Australian. No, no, they've introduced themselves somehow. The brown with, uh, widow is an immigrant, parts, not a hybrid. Like plants, but it's from imported species interbreeding with Australian yeah. spiders that new dangerous hybrids arise. The problem uh, is that if Dr. Raven or any other spider specialist finds such hybrids, they can't identify them. And in that confusion lies the danger. In a place like the Queensland Museum, you get the feeling that every living creature has been classified, has been given a name and a place in the order of things. That's the process of taxonomy. But when you get to the widow group of spiders, that process has completely broken down. No one knows how many species of widow there are, nor can they tell one species from another. In fact, the widows are an international taxonomic scandal. Well, originally we thought there were about 20 to 30 species of widow throughout the world. Then in 1959, Herb Levy, an American arachnologist, did a study and he concluded that there are only six. Now, about a couple of years later, he realised that he was wrong, quite devastatingly wrong, but he said nothing about it until 1983 when he, did, he produced a total retraction of everything that he'd said before about them. So now we're back to the situation of we're somewhere between six and 30, perhaps. We don't know. It's just a complete nightmare. Now, the standard um, young... Our group, own redback is a member of the widow group of spiders, and a good case in point. And look at that. That's absolutely amazing. The pattern is very, very faint. Officially, all of these are redbacks, but the variation in colour and markings means that they could, in fact, be several different species. What we do know is that the number of redbacks has increased, up to threefold in the last five years, according to Dr. Raven. They are the single biggest public inquiry of any animal. People constantly telephone me and surprise and shock. They've been living there 15, 20 years sometimes, and they've never seen a redback. Now they're all over the place. That's dangerous enough when you consider that redback's favorite places are also human habitats your garden shed, the brick walls of your house, and frighteningly hot metallic corners oh in children's playgrounds. In this lovely big steam truck. But this is where kids play all the time, isn't it? Well, this is the sort of situation they like the best. I mean, the metal things have nice, lots of nice spaces where these redbacks absolutely love. But right here, among the swings and seesaws, Dr. Raven finds strong evidence that the hybrids are indeed already here new kinds of spiders that may or may not be more venomous than our redbacks. You see the one that you can see from your side, yes. it's not black. That one there looks bizarre. Yes. It's a young of that big female, but it's just so light coloured. Um, it's just very, very, very unusual. So it, it starts to indicate that, you know, what we're talking about has already occurred. Hybridisation has been going on for a while, it's quite possible. We just don't know. But so that, that doesn't that, look like a redback? Not in any shape or form. It, it looks so far away from a redback, you know, a lot of people would, would just dismiss it out of hand. Playgrounds like this one, Dr. Raven carefully clears out for safety and for study. It really just explodes the whole situation. Our total understanding of mating and, and all the nice things that spiders and other animals are supposed to do very neatly and properly is just shattered. But how can exotic species of spiders, the ones that seem to be breeding with redbacks to produce these menacing hybrids, get into the country in the first place? 
spiders are great travellers. They hitch rides on air and sea freight to get around the world. But how do they survive the long voyages? Well, spiders can live for up to a year without food or water. And if a trip is 100 days or less, they arrive in their new homes in such good shape, they're ready to start up a family. Not all imported goods can be sprayed. So despite the best efforts of quarantine, the brown widow and who knows how many other species have slipped into Australia. Brown widows were first noticed in Brisbane just last year and within six months had moved north, probably via rail, to Townsville and Darwin and possibly as far south as Canberra. Once they hit town, baby widows use a trail of fine web to sail to their habitats. All in all, they're more efficient invaders than the cane toad. So we know that imported spiders are making themselves at home in our cities. And that hybrids of unknown toxicity are appearing. That brings us right back to the importance of taxonomy, to sorting out just how many widow species there are. What does it matter if there's one widow species or 50? Well, it's important to know if any immigrants will be friendly or deadly, and whether they're likely to interbreed with our own small but lethal redback to produce something that might be larger, more aggressive, could live anywhere, breed all year, and for which we have no antivenine. It's in the face of that threat that Dr Raven has gone on the taxonomic attack. So what do you find in the Brisbane suburban jungle? I like this dry area back here. He's gathering breeding stock of every variation, every potential species or hybrid of widow he can find. What's that up there? Oh, here's one on the top oh, of the no. head. Just take that one. Um, can, there we go. Done. He's breeding up each variation into armies of virgin soldiers he'll see which crossbreedings produce fertile offspring. In about a year's time, for the first time, he'll be able to say exactly which hybrids present a new threat, being either more toxic or able to live in a wider range of environments. He's also looking for the clear distinguishing feature that will define, once and for all, how many widow species there are. So far, the best, if obscure, taxonomic handle appears to be the different density and water resistance of the hairs on spiders' abdomens. But the search goes on. In the meantime, something a little more practical than splitting hairs. Dr Raven is plotting the progress of redbacks across Brisbane. The redback map will soon be available as a public warning. What we're trying to do is understand where they are now so that we can uh, tell the people of Brisbane, OK, we see a line, we see a band. They will be in your area and uh, they are moving this way. We want to see the, the seasonal contraction and expansion of these things and we would like to follow the annual movement of them through the suburbs. Sorting out the taxonomic confusion of the past and predicting public dangers is a lonely, long-distance task. Not until 1992, when widow specialists from around the globe will meet in Brisbane, does Dr Raven expect to have brought the widow world from chaos to control. And that's Quantum for tonight. Next